So it looks like Wall Street is finally waking up and realizing Tesla is the one and I'm referring to the full self driving. Now, not all of them, not all of them. Most of them still got their heads stuck up their ass so far deep that they just can't see anything other than the auto margins and the vehicle deliveries and nothing else, not even the energy part. But it looks like some, the smart ones, are slowly coming out and realizing this. So in this video, we're gonna watch a video that's less than two minutes of one of the guys in the Wall Streets finally realizing the potential of Tesla, which is a sheesh moment. And we're gonna go point by point after watching it because it, there's, there's a lot of interesting points that he made that were absolutely facts. And of course, I got the data and the metrics and the charts to you know back up what he's stating. As well as one bombshell that Elon Musk dropped regarding FSD which as me as a Tesla investor, the reason why I went all in to Tesla stock was because of autonomy and seeing what's happening. It's absolutely an awesome, awesome thing and an awesome feeling. So smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's watch. You have a small position, speaking of driving, autonomous driving and the like in Tesla, which you revealed on our program the last time we spoke. What takes it from a quote unquote small position to something larger? What do you need to see? from Elon and, and that company from here? Well, first, let me say, I think Elon's done an extraordinary job, and I think his advantage in AI and full self-driving relative to all the other manufacturers in the world is deeply underappreciated. I described FSD 12 as a chat GPT moment for self-driving. After 10 years um, of, of marginal improvements, we had a profound breakthrough around the imitation learning of FSD 12. Um, I think that will be an incredibly valuable asset to the company. I don't think it's an asset that can be replicated by other OEMs in the United States. They simply lack the data. And this is data in, pixels in, and control plane out. So unless you have the data, you're going to have a very hard time catching Tesla in full self-driving. I don't think BYD is going to be able to uh, you know, play in that game either. And I thought it was fascinating. At the moment that the United States is banning TikTok, that the Chinese government is providing permission to Tesla to do full self-driving in partnership with Baidu in China. It shows the resilience and the strength of the relationships uh, that Elon Musk has in China and that Tesla has in China, um, you know, and their own push toward AI. So I think, you know, you can't think of the company as an auto company. You have to think of it as a technology company today. We think that it's, you know, fully va valued. It's been a, it's been a volatile ride, uh, but we think this may, may be one of the companies that can break through on energy, can break through on AI and FSD. And so we're paying very close attention because if we start to see the adoption and the conversion on FSD that we think is possible, this will be a story like Apple and services, where services becomes an increasingly important part of their uh, of their profit makeup. Whew, that's a lot of stuff to unpack there. But pretty much what he was saying is that Tesla is the only one when it comes to FSD. It's the only one. But going point by point, the first thing that he said was AI, Tesla's AI or FSD is deeply underappreciated. Nobody in the Wall Street is really looking at full self-driving. The only one that's really giving it some sort of evaluation is Morgan Stanley and they're having a price target north of like 300 bucks or around 300 bucks per share which is more than a, almost a double from what it is now. And the analyst from Morgan Stanley actually sat in a Tesla and tried the version 12, which a lot of these analysts hasn't done. And he was just like blown away as well, going like, hey, this it looks like could be the future, which it is the future. So those who know, they know, and those who don't still look at the auto margins. It was just flipping hilarious. The next thing he said, FSD version 12 is a chat GBT moment, and it's a 10 years of work to get it to where it is now. Now, Elon Musk did mention this last year in an interview in CNBC that Tesla's FST will have a chat GBT moment and uh, he, he was right. I mean, he's not really good with his timelines, but uh, he was spot on. He was absolutely spot on. Another important thing that he said here was that the FST is a great asset for the company. Absolutely. I think later in the future, I would say five years from now, the main thing is going to be the software margins that, okay, you got the auto margins, the auto that's growing, that's maintaining whatever it is, but the auto margins is where you got a lot of growth in because now you've got millions of vehicles on the road that you can just with the snap of a finger, get the FSD up and running and get that a 60, 80% margins. And that's where you're going to make a lot of money. So of course, I think it's the greatest asset for the next five years, the FSD. Now, one of the most important things that he said here that should not go over your head is that he said that it cannot 
but the FSD cannot be replicated by other OEMs in the US because of the lack of data. If we look at Waymo and Cruise from the chart here made by lovely Invest Arc, you guys can see here autonomous miles run rate is over 700 million miles collected. And as we know now, that's more than double. I think we reached around 1.5 billion, which is absolutely insane. And look at the rest. I mean, like Cruise and Waymo. I mean, the other chart here, we can see Waymo, but just I mean, Cruise and Waymo don't even have a line. I mean, Baidu, which is the company that Tesla partnered with in China to get the FSD there. Even, I mean, it's like 40, 50 times. The number is just too much, like 10 times, more than 10 times, 100 times. It's ridiculous. And pretty much what he's saying is that if you don't have data, you just cannot catch with Tesla. They are the one. They you just can't catch up with them. Tesla is the only one. You just can't catch up with them. People are going like, no, Mercedes, I said level three. But it can't work in rain. It can't work at night. You can only go 30 miles or 40 50 miles per hour you can't do majority of the things that tesla does even with version 11 so really level three of mercedes is like version level 0 0.01 for tesla which is just hilarious how people are comparing that oh tesla is behind they are not behind they are light years ahead he also mentions that byd can't play at the fsd game cannot play with this game and the thing with byd they don't believe in the full self-driving thing they said it's impossible to be you know solved and uh, i think <laughs> how they're seeing how Tesla's progressing, they can see that, okay, maybe we were wrong, but it was something that I don't think they were willing to bet on. I mean, the, the dude has Warren Buffett as an investor and the Warren, Warren Buffett doesn't want to deal with big risks. If BYD was doing autonomous driving, why not invest in Tesla, right? So I think that's why BYD didn't, you know, decide to go down this route. It's too expensive, too time costly, and Warren Buffett needs his money now. He can't wait for another decade like us tesla investors that we're not in it for the next one two or three years we're in it for at least 2030 and beyond i hope right right but i highly do believe that the first company that's going to license out full self-driving is most likely probably going to be byd not ford not another rest they're all scanning back evs i think byd could be a potential because they do see each other as partners as the first company to or first automaker first ev maker to license out full self-driving let's see one important point that i do want to mention here that he mentioned here was that tesla has a strong relationship with china he did talk about tiktok being banned in the united states and how china is giving the red carpet to tesla now i do agree with this i do agree that china is giving tesla a very a very very special treatment with taxes with with you know helping them with the lending with reducing taxes giving them well now they're increasing taxes but giving them the land. I mean, China doesn't do that to companies. You know, if you want to operate in China, first of all, you can't get a land, but Tesla got it. And you need to be, you know, a joint partnership with a Chinese company, which Tesla didn't have to do that either. So that was absolutely a sheesh moment. And the crazy part is, is that the rest of the world where Tesla is in, they're being very negative and hostile against Elon and Tesla themselves. Check out this chart. Shout out to Jimmy here for making this post because this was absolutely flippant, hilariously true. He says, Tesla is being attacked by extremists in Germany. Germany, extremists in the US government, extremists in Sweden, extremists on Wall Street. The stock is heavily shorted with over $50 billion in total shorts. He also forgot the mainstream media here because I mean, Reuters or rumors, as I call them now, I don't even call them Reuters anymore because there's just nothing but rumors making BS up left, right and center. They're making a lot of fun around Tesla as well. But then you got, you know, the one and only friendly government to Tesla that offers full support is sadly the Communist Party of China, which is just absolutely ridiculous. When you look at it and you see the full picture and you're seeing that a Communist Party is giving more attention to a US automaker, right? These guys, you know, see each other as adversaries, you know, the US and, the, you know, China. The fact that China's like, no, man, Tesla, you're, you're, you're great. You're great. We're, we're going to give you special treatment, the red carpet. But the rest of the world, which is democratic and free, you get extremist stuff. It's just, it's insane. It's, it, it's a weird world that we live in. And I don't even know. I don't even know. Now, he mentioned about TikTok being banned in the US. I don't know. I am on the fence in this. I don't think it should be banned. The opportunity of TikTok is huge when it comes to businesses here in Kuwait. I do use TikTok a lot to promote the business here and it does extremely well, but I can see what the US is saying because you know, in China, Facebook is banned, WhatsApp is banned, Instagram is banned, and I think Google is banned as well. So there's so many other things that's banned in China. If, if there is evidence that there's some, I don't know, propaganda being shown through TikTok to the US citizens and stuff like that, 
I don't know, maybe. I'm on the fence on this, to be honest. Comment down below, are you guys with or against this TikTok band? I am on the fence with it because it's just propaganda. I don't know. Let's see. But that was that one part. The next thing he says here is that think of Tesla as a tech and AI company, not a car company. And guys, that's where most retail investors who are not long on Tesla and Wall Street analysts and kind of like Gordon Johnson type of people that just don't understand this part. T Tesla, look, if it was just a car company, they would not be investing tens of billion dollars into AI, FSD, flop disks, robots, you know, forget the robots, but just the AI stuff, right? The compute stuff, the collection of millions of miles of data driven to solve autonomy. That doesn't sound like a car company to me. And if it was, I definitely would not be going all in. But 100%, Tesla is not a car company. 90, I mean, I've already made a video about this. You guys can check out right here how Tesla's com completely changed to a whole different company. And I show how the numbers do prove that as well. But here's a scenario that I think that could happen in the future. And I posted it here on X. And again, if you guys aren't following on X, and I don't know what you guys are doing, I do post a lot of interesting stuff. You guys can pause and read here. It's pretty long. But to sum it up, Pretty much what I'm saying here is that later in the future, when Tesla's FSD is widespread and, you know, works very well, approved, regulated, all that kind of goodies. And the most important part when it comes to the main product of Tesla, Tesla can sell their hardware, which is their vehicles at cost and push the full self-driving software, which is about 60 to 80 percent profits. If you have over 10 million vehicles, 50 million vehicles, 60 million vehicles, let's say in five, six years, because right now they got six, over 6 million vehicles on the road. You can 10x that to over 60 million, which I think they can easily do by end decade or maybe mid quarter next decade, 2032. Well, you're talking about multiple tens, maybe even hundreds of billions of dollars in just profits, which is just mind blowing insane. But again, this is a scenario, but this could, this could actually probably be realistic sometime in the future. The last thing that he talked about was pretty interesting, which is a good comparison, kind of, in a way, is that he talks about that Tesla's FSD is like Apple services. If FSD adoption conversion rate continues to grow, it's like a story like Apple services. And if we look at the chart on how Apple services looks like, you guys clearly see it does $23 billion in just one quarter. $23 billion with a 34 or 35% gross profit margin, while Tesla, now in my opinion, the FSC for Tesla is probably gonna be closer to what NVIDIA range is. They're around 80%. I'm thinking for Tesla could be around 60% because you're selling software. You're selling software. You probably gotta maintain it. And it doesn't have much expenses because you've already invested so much in it for the past 10 years. But the only thing that Tesla needs to do is to maintain it, update it, and improve it. That's it. And that comes with a high margin, profit margin, which is insane. Now for Apple, you guys can see here, it's only $23 billion compared to their iPhone of 69 billion, but $23 billion, that's the second biggest business for Apple. In my opinion, it's also gonna be, the FSC is gonna be the second biggest business for Tesla after the vehicles, but the profit margin is gonna be a whole lot more. And it's gonna be more exponential. The more hardware you got out there, the more FSC Tesla can sell. So this part, I agree. And when this happens, not if, when this happens, oh man, it's gonna be a good day for Tesla investors. Now that's all what he said. Pretty much he said that Tesla's the only one that can do this. And there's really no competition when it comes to full self driving. There really isn't, guys. I don't know who is saying, those guys with LiDAR, they've already lost the battle. They can't scale. They can't scale. Tesla can scale. They're scaling. I mean, how are they going to get full self-driving in China with one over the air update? That is it. And other places of the world as well. Competing with Tesla in this full self-driving space, you just can't. You need the data and you don't have the most, nobody has the data. Nobody has the data close to Tesla. And that's the most important part. Now, speaking of the full self-driving, Elon Musk did come out and slap us with this bombshell with FSD update, which is a very big deal and music to my ears or music to my eyes because I got to read it. He says that FSD version 12.4 has almost completely retrained models. The final touches are for comfort as it sometimes accelerates or breaks too fast for most people's taste. 12.5 and 12.6. Now, here's the thing, guys. We're already at 12.3.6. So he's talking about 12.4, now he's talking about 12.5 and 12.6. So three big versions after this. Version 12.5 and 12.6 are in various stages of testing. We're getting into rare complex situations 
For example, going down a narrow one-way road, encountering a road closure and having to reverse out to find a new route. That's pretty darn complex. And if these guys are going, Tesla's going down this route to find more complexity so he can train the AI so it can know what to do. That's insane. That's insane. He finishes out here by saying that closure also needs to be communicated to the rest of the fleet so you don't get a whole bunch of Tesla stuck down the road. I mean, if you guys are a heavy Tesla investor like I am and you're all in because of, you know, autonomy, this is a bombshell. This is a flipping bombshell. Complex? Weibo is driving on the wrong side of the road and these guys are thinking to do complex stuff. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. But let me buy more Tesla stock first before. I'm ready. There you guys have it. Wall Street is slowly waking up. Elon Musk dropping bombshells about FSD. FSD is literally going to take over majority of Tesla's news in the next year or two. Of course, it's going to have new models coming out as well. But the most important part would be the more core part of Tesla would be the FSD. And I hope and I really do hope that Tesla by end of this year can have a separate section in their income statement showing software, you know, software revenue and software expenses and profits. That will make my life so much easier because doing these spreadsheets, it's hard to speculate what's there, what isn't because it's already baked in the average selling price. So the average selling price is definitely going to dip down for sure once that is segregated in the income statement. But you know what else they should segregate in the income statement? The superchargers. And I am making a video going over what the revenue profits could be year over year for Tesla with the superchargers. It is a complex model and I've been trying to work this out for some time now and I'm getting close to being finished. So that's probably going to be my next video. If not, it's going to be the video of the, you know, figuring out what Q2 deliveries are going to be, even though that, you know, as I said, that's a short term thing. It's fun, you know, tracking, guessing and predicting what they're production numbers are going to be and delivery numbers are going to be as well as with the stock price and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for these two videos unless there's some bombshell that comes out in between. I'll definitely cover those as well. But expect those two videos sometime in the future or the next videos or so. But here's the thing guys, Tesla, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is transforming into a completely different company. I made a video about it over here. You guys can check out. It's pretty darn interesting. Data, facts, and some numbers that I use here from the earnings report, all that kind of stuff that justifies it. Guys, get your I bought the dev t-shirt or, you know, become a channel member. Support a channel by becoming a channel member and subscribe and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.